Hello and welcome. This presentation is intended to help you in using an important tool in the CPS process. The web of abstraction, or what your textbook calls webbing. Using the web is analogous to turning over all the pieces of a puzzle before you begin to solve it. You do it in the clarification stage to ensure you are examining all possible framings of the problem. It helps you to question what precise problem you want to solve within the broader challenge you are being presented with. And it helps you to question the level of abstraction you want to address. Do you want to tackle a given problem at the high strategic level or at the on-the-ground tactical level? The web is similar to the five whys, which you may have discussed in your operations class, and which allows you to get to the root of the problem by asking why five times. The web, however, allows you to explore a problem in a more divergent way, allowing you to examine multiple and complex factors. Your textbook explains the web well, but it can sometimes be difficult to translate instructions on the printed page into actions that you will take in your team. The goal of this presentation is to walk you through the steps of the web and provide clarity per that perhaps you won't get simply from reading about the tool in your text. My goal is to make sure that when you try this tool in your team, you can give it a fair shot and don't dismiss it simply because executing it for the first time can be a bit complex. According to your text, the Web of Abstraction is a problem analysis tool designed to go beyond the initial definition of the problem and to assist you in defining the problem at an appropriate level of, a, of abstraction. To execute, you begin with an initial problem statement. Moving up the web, you ask, why is this problem ha happening? And why else is it happening? Moving down, you ask, what's stopping this from happening? And what else is stopping this from happening? Key here is that you do not need to start with the, quote, correct problem statement. You can start with any problem statement that seems somewhat right to you. The goal of the web is to discover the right statement. When you're moving up the web, you ask why and why else multiple times, and you look for patterns. If you notice you're repeating yourself, that doesn't mean you're doing the exercise wrong. The same issues will often recur in multiple places. That said, if you're finding excessive repetition, then you may not be thinking divergently enough. Let's look at an example, which should clarify what I mean. Let's imagine someone who begins with this challenge. How might I earn my first million in the next five years? You'll notice that this challenge is articulated using the statement starters and formula recommended in your textbook and in the assigned video. You'd then ask, why do I want to solve this problem? Or why do I want to do this? Perhaps you want to travel. You would state, I want to travel, and then reframe that statement as a problem question. How might I find a way to travel? Why else do you want to earn your first million? I want to invest in my business venture. Reframed as a question, that would read, how might I find funding for my business venture? Why else? Perhaps you want to spend more time with your kids. How might I structure my life to have more time with my family? Why else? There may be many reasons. For example, you might not want to take orders from other people. Or perhaps there's a psychological component. I want my brother, the lawyer, to respect me, even though I didn't go to go get into law school. Perhaps your real question is, how might I feel respected? Once you've exhausted all the why else's, you'd ask why again about each of the items listed. For example, you might ask, why do I want to solve the problem of finding funding for my business venture? Here you might answer, because I want to be my own boss. And now you can see that a theme might be emerging. Perhaps the fact that you want to be your own boss and don't like taking orders from other people is particularly important. You wouldn't jump to that conclusion at this point, but you might take note of the recurrence. You might want to invest in your own venture because you have a really great idea that could do good in the world. Why else? 
Perhaps you want to make your first billion in the next 10 years. You can see how this can continue for quite a while. And given that this is a divergent exercise, it should continue for quite a while until all possible options are explored. As you go, keep in mind that repetition is not necessarily a bad thing, but that too much repetition is an indicator that you should consciously work on greater divergence. You may be stuck in your pre-existing notion of how the problem should be framed. Now, before you work your way down the web, you'd think about whether you want to retain the same originating problem statement. You might keep the question, how might I earn my first million in the next five years? On the other hand, if after looking at all the problem statements on the upside of the web, you recognize that a different one should be your focus, you should change it. For example, if you recognize that the true issue is that you don't feel respected in your family, perhaps that is the problem that you want to focus on solving instead of trying to earn more money. How do you decide where to focus? You can use the convergent tools in your textbook, and you should also simply discuss and debate. It is always ideal if you can come to the root of a problem and solve the root, the root problem. That said, it's not always possible. For example, you might not have the influence to so solve the core problem and may need instead to solve that portion of the problem over which you can exert the most influence. It's also possible that solving the root problem will take a long time and that you need to come to a solution now, quickly. In short, there's no easy answer for how you converge onto the quote, right problem to solve. You must grapple with the question and use your judgment. Let's now discuss moving down the web. When you were moving up the web, the problem was being explored in more and more abstract terms. Moving down, you're moving into the concrete and tactical level. Let's say you keep the original problem statement, how might I earn my first million in the next five years? You then ask, what's stopping this from happening? Perhaps you're lazy. How might I stop being lazy? What else is stopping this from happening? Perhaps you don't have any startup capital. How might I obtain startup capital? You might not have any education. How might I get an education? You keep going like this until all possibilities are exhausted. You then move down the web for each of the items identified. For example, looking at the problem, how might I stop being lazy? You'd ask, what's stopping me from not being lazy? Perhaps you don't like your work. How may it, might I enjoy my work? Perhaps you don't have a lot of energy. How might I increase my energy levels? Perhaps you like surfing the internet. How might I reduce my time on the internet? You could even go one level further. Let's say you realize that a core issue might revolve around not enjoying your work. You might then ask, what's stopping you from enjoying your work? Perhaps you're in the wrong job or report to someone you don't respect, or perhaps you don't like being inside all day. Again, we're seeing the theme of not liking the need to report to someone pop up. And again, without concluding that this is necessarily the case, we might question if this theme is significant. How would you do this online? For this course, I'm recommending you use linoit.com. That said, you could definitely use other programs such as Google Draw. In conclusion, the web of abstraction is a problem analysis tool designed to go beyond the initial definition of the problem and to assist you in defining the problem at an appropriate level of abstraction. Hopefully, this presentation provides clarity around how you'll use this tool with your team. Of course, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you.